So let me begin with the story of uh, AlphaGo's victory over Master Li. Now, many people have raised the question, is now a machine intelligence superior to human being? My answer to this is no, of course not. The machine can calculate the move very quickly, but it's the human actually has to make the move. Right? So you have, they have an assistant there. Now, the brain is actually uh, the most complicated structure in the universe. It is a product of evolution. During this long evolution, uh, at one time this accident, some mutation has created explosive growth of the human brain making a very thick tissue, that's where the intelligence is. The modern technology of brain imaging, such as PET, can tell us that different brain regions are actually devoted to a different function, vision, hearing, and speaking. For a more complicated thought process, such as thinking, it involves global activities. Now, this global activity is actually carried out with, uh, by a very complicated network of 100 billion cells of hundreds of different types making the network that's very complicated. And the function is carried out within a very specific pathways within this network we call neural circuits. The activity uh, the going on is electrical and the unit for communication is called action potential. It's a pulse of a electrical current that passes through the network. And we now know every neurons uh, in the brain actually do carry out coding for different uh, purposes. For example, you can code space of animal in the, in the familiar environment, the so-called place cell. The unit of communication is called a uh, nerve cell, it's called neuron. It actually has a structure of input uh, with a lot of dendrites, which receive input from other cells, and output called axon, that goes to send out information to other cells to make connections. One of the most important discoveries over the last 50 years, I would say, is the realization that this communication, the synapse, where the, com the signal is passed from one cell to another, is actually can be modified by experience. Now, if the cells, two cells are, uh, have correlated activity, the uh, efficiency of transmission is increased. If they are not correlated, the efficiency is reduced. Now this uh, change in efficiency is actually happening in this network with enlargement of structure of connectivity between the cell or shrinkage of the connection. So the efficiency is actually caused by changing the structure. Now the idea that the memory or the experience is stored in the network, its best example is the, uh, the idea of uh, a cell assembly or neuronal assembly. Now think about a, a, our memory of a circle. This activation of a group of cells by a circle constantly will link the, uh, the connection between them. The memory of our grandmother is because of exposure to our grandmother's face during our childhood that links groups of neurons that are coding for specific feature of the mother, grandmother's uh, face and that linkage is the memory of the grandmother. So actually uh, activation of part of it can reactivate memory of the grandmother. Now this network is actually formed after the birth. Now during the first two years of a baby, there's an increased growth of the network. And this network is formed by experience. So the, if you look at this uh, connection, the synapse between cells, there's a great increase during the baby period for the first two years. And then there's a decline, decline of the synapse as the experience is shaping the connection, pruning some connections to make it more mature. Uh, more useful for the uh, connection. And this pruning changes goes along throughout the life. Now, the artificial intelligence uh, had a big uh, progress during the 1980s, where the, uh, John Hoffield introduced the idea of the plasticity of connections into the uh, artificial network. He showed that one can uh, modify the synapse and then the, the network can learn. This idea is now further uh, promoted uh, recently by this so-called deep uh, neural net network, which is the basis of AlphaGo's ability, where the plasticity of connections actually play an important part. And there are also new elements of the uh, brain science intro uh, introduced into this. For example, multi-layers, structure, and recurrent connections, uh, the idea like that. So today I'm telling you a, a few new ideas about you know, multiple cell types within the networks that has not been introduced in the network. There's modification of networks by experience. There is the memory mechanism where we keep our memory of various things like my, our grandmother's face. Uh, this needs to be introduced into the artificial intelligence. When that's done, we have a much more powerful uh, artificial network.
Thank you.